Hi guys and welcome back to another video where today we're going to be predicting the scores of week 7 of this, the 2020-2021 Premier League season. Now before we get on to week 7 predictions, let's have a quick look back at how well we got on in week 6. So last week didn't have the best of weeks, only had 5 points with 3 correct results and 1 perfect score. That perfect score being Spurs to beat Burnley 1-0. Yeah, it was a difficult week, Nathan. And I came away with just 6 points, which is a, an improvement on my past uh, few weeks. Uh, having just the 1 perfect score, which was the Brighton 1-1 draw at home against West Brom. Representing the viewers last week was Keanu Trout, and Keanu came away with just the 2 points, no perfect scores for Keanu last week. Top scorer of the week last week, and actually Nathan, there was three top scorers. So if we mm -hmm. just have a quick look at the league table, we had Hassan Ali, 0-1-0 Foster, and first time playing this season, A. Judy, or A. Judy. And the three of those guys, they came away with 11 points. So congratulations to the three of them. Uh, Nathan, in the table now, you're up to 15th position after your five point haul last week. So you're on 35 points. And I'm on 32 points, which takes me up slightly to 25th mm -hmm. in the table. But there has been a little bit of movement at the top of the table. David Redcliffe now on top there with 44 points. And in second place, Hassan Halley, who came away with a, a magnificent score of 11 points, as we've already said. But looking at the table as a whole, I'm just going to scroll down quite slowly there and see if you can spot your name up on the screen. But that's enough for week six. Let's move on and make some predictions for week seven. Okay, so first up we have Wolves versus Crystal Palace on at eight o'clock on Friday, I believe. It is, yeah. It is indeed on the uh, box office and you know our opinions on that. Pay-per-view, of course. Uh, Wolves last week, 1-1 one, one draw against Newcastle, quite underwhelming for them, I think. Uh, they should have really come out and won that one. Uh, and they're coming up against a Palace team who, well, they beat Crystal Palace, well, they beat Fulham 2-1 away. Uh, good result that, but then again, every team should be aiming to beat Fulham at the moment. But I don't know. I fancy my eyes on Wolves in this one. Um, they, they've won their last three... They haven't lost in the last three matches, only losing two this season. Doing very well. Uh, and they're definitely going to want to bounce back, especially after they couldn't beat Newcastle. So, Palace usually better away, but I think this is changing a little bit this season. I just think Wolves will, have, will just have enough, so I'm going to go for a 2-0 Wolves victory. Yeah, a little bit of a tricky one to predict this one. Mm -hmm. um, there have been under three goals scored in 13 of Wolves' last 16 mm -hmm. games in the Premier League. Yeah. And there's been three or more goals goals scored in Crystal Palace's last mm -hmm. three, <laughs> three away game. So it's a little bit of um, a balancing act, this one. So mm -hmm. according to those stats, it's not going to be that, you know, too many goals. It's not going to be like a 5-3 or anything like that. Um, as you said, Crystal mm -hmm. Palace last week, okay, mm -hmm. coming away with um, all three points against Fulham and Wolves getting that draw against Newcastle. But I don't think Wolves... You know, they 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 didn't look like that they'd score a half full against Newcastle. A little bit disappointed with them overall. So um tight one to call. I'm gonna sit on the fence with this one. I think it's gonna end all square one one. Next up we got the first of the Saturday fixtures. This takes place at half past twelve. It's live on BT Sport and that's between Sheffield United and Manchester City. Manchester City last week coming from behind yeah. against West Ham, I think it was Phil Foden mm -hmm. cancelling out Antonio's goal there, so it ended mm -hmm. all square. Sheffield United, okay, they lost against Liverpool, but they actually played really well, yeah, played well. in that match. Could have come away with a draw in the end. In this one, however, tough to um, call this one because I think Jesus and Aguero are both going to be out for this one. I think it's a long term injury for um, Jesus. I think he's going to be in contention at the end of uh, November and Aguero is going to be touch and go but I don't think he's going to be there. Ben, um, Benjamin Mendy is also out and Nathan Ake well, Benjamin Mendy's always may, out, isn't he? Yeah, may not be in the starting lineup as well for Sheffield United. I think Mousse is out and O'Connell which uh, I believe is out possibly for the entire season. 
Um, Sheffield United, okay, they find themselves near the bottom of the table. Not conceding that many goals, but they're not scoring themselves. Yeah. Finding it really difficult. They've only scored three goals this uh, this campaign with nine mm -hmm. against them. Manchester City, okay, they are in 13th position. Only one win in their last four fixtures. So this is going to be a very, very tight affair. Sheffield United very stubborn at the moment. But I think Man City, okay, I, even though they are in Champions League, mm -hmm action which takes place tonight so they've got a, a few days before the fixture on Saturday so they're going to huff and puff looking a little bit tired Man City but uh, mm -hmm. I think they'll just scrape through 1-0 Interesting I actually think it's going to be 2-0 uh, to them Sheffield United even though they are playing well I just don't think they're going to have the confidence to see it through really and think even though Man City haven't been scoring much I think Pep's going to want them to have this their scoring boots back so I reckon it's going to be 2-0 they're going to want them to make a statement in this one so Sheffield United is still in the drop zone next up we've got Burnley versus Chelsea now Burnley are still 18th at the moment have been playing some really nice football I thought they played well, that's a rarity to say, but um, I thought they played really well against Spurs. Just a shame they couldn't get anything, and then Son ended up getting that goal. They are actually playing good football, but they've had a really tricky start to the season, hence why they're so low down. And they're coming up against another challenge inside in Chelsea. Uh, should have had a penalty last week. Completely ridiculous against Man United. Ended in a nil-nil. Chelsea should have definitely won that game. Shouldn't have been a draw. Well, Man United, they did have their chances as well. Yeah, I they think did it was have their chances. Goals, yeah. though, isn't it? For Chelsea making mm. a couple of fine saves. That one in the second half was absolutely fantastic. Excellent, yeah. Um, but, well... It's going it's to be touch and go throughout this one, but I fully expect Chelsea. They should be able to pick up a goal in this one. I don't expect them to score much because they are playing in the Champions League on Wednesday away as well, so we've got a bit of travelling to do there. So I'm going to say a narrow 1-0 to Chelsea. Yeah, I think Chelsea will pick up all three points as well. This one, the only 3 o'clock kickoff yeah. on Saturday. All these matches taking place at different times, of course. So, you know, you could actually sit down on your sofa and watch all of these matches um, and end up a bit of a couch potato, yeah. if, uh, if you like. But uh, Burnley, OK, they, they did play well yeah. against Spurs, just couldn't get any, you know, yeah. couldn't get in the back of the net and uh, Spurs themselves, that magnificence, it was, was it a cross came in, header from Kane onto Son and Son pops it in the back of the net, absolutely fantastic, uh, finished by the um, South Korean. So Burnley at home against Chelsea, Chelsea, okay, they have been yeah. scoring freely, but looks like Frank Lampard's trying to shore up the defence now, mm -hmm. so that's having a detrimental effect on uh, the striking options up front with mm -hmm. Werner, and, yeah. and how can he fit the likes of Werner, Pulisic, uh, Zayek, Havertz, uh, you've got Mason Mount there them as well. Them pronunciations it's, though. <laughs> yeah, them pronunciations. Oh He's trying words. to fit everybody in into that box and uh, it's just not yeah. working at the moment. So, uh, saying that though, I fully expect Chelsea will just sneak through mm -hmm. in this one. I think Burnley, they're going to start, they need to start to come out of their cage yeah. a little bit and that could uh, play into Chelsea hands, Chelsea's hands. So I'm going to go for a 2-0 away victory. But the way things have, the, you know, the scores yeah. have been going, you could see a 3-0 victory Anything to Burnley in this one. Yeah. It's uh, very hard to call. Next up, we've got Liverpool at home against West Ham. This is live on Sky at half past five on Saturday evening. Last season, this ended up in a 3-2 victory to the Reds, but we know Liverpool in the past few matches haven't been playing that great. Van Dijk, we know all about that. Out um, of the season, yeah. Out, yeah, yeah, but uh, Sheffield United, a little bit unfortunate against Liverpool last weekend. West Ham mm -hmm. doing really well. Okay, I know they've lost, uh, drawn rather their last two games, but prior to that was two victories, so that's four games now without defeat. So, mm -hmm. you would expect Liverpool to win this match. However, with the form of West Ham's going on, you expect them to get, you know, they expect the Hammers to get something as well. So, I'm actually going to go for a draw in this one. I think there'll be plenty of goals, and I'm going to go for Desmond's 2-2. Yeah, I think that there'll be goals in this one, but I think Liverpool will just have too much. I'm, I'm concerned about the West Ham defence, to be honest. Really? I thought they'd shown that yeah. uh, quite nicely. They have shown it quite nicely, but I... <laughs> I don't know. I know against Tottenham they did concede free and it was like that, that amazing comeback. Yeah, that amazing comeback. That's what that's what concerns me, especially against the top clubs. They just seem to not want to defend either. I mean, we've seen it with Newcastle, with Arsenal, um, well, minus Leicester. We've seen it with 
and we've seen it with Spurs as well and in some cases Man City um, just leaving it go at the last few minutes so um, yeah against Liverpool I don't know Salah Mane Firmino gonna happen again you know the rule uh, free one I reckon free one Next up, we've got Aston Villa versus Southampton on pay-per-view at midday on Sunday. Now, Villa still in third place. Very good start to the season. Won their first four, but then they did lose last time around to Leeds. Won't get on to that. But, um, and then coming up against the Southampton side, who got a very good and shocking victory against Everton last week. Southampton always seem to do well against the big clubs, but then just completely just can't do anything against some of the clubs some of the teams around or below them very inconsistent side Southampton are but um, but yeah I fully expect Aston Villa to bounce back in this one they're going to they're beating the sides that they need to around them especially and I'm going to say this is this one's going to be a 2-1 victory to the villains. Well, I'm going to completely disagree with you on this one. I think the Saints are going to come away with all three points in this one. Aston Villa okay we know how well they play dismantling Liverpool yeah. um, in the past few games. Last weekend, home against Leeds, totally uh, outfought and outplayed and outscored, even though Grealish should have uh, had had one for the uh, the villains there. Uh, yeah, close one to call, but I think Southampton, the way they're playing, they're in fine form, even though Villa are as well. I think it's probably got draw written all over this, but I'm going to go for a 2-1 away victory. Next up, we've got on Sky. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention as well about Aston Villa match is in the last 11 meetings, Villa have only won once. Southampton have had seven wins. And last time Villa beat Southampton was in the 2013-2014 season. So um, the stats maybe add up to a Southampton win, but uh, stats, you can look at them and uh, twist them. Yeah. Anyway you want. But next up we've got Newcastle at home against Everton and this takes place at 2 o'clock on Sunday. It's live on Sky, uh, not on pay-per-view, just on the normal uh, sports channels there. Everton got quite a few injuries woes at the moment. It was touch and go whether Rodriguez yeah. would play last week and he didn't really do a lot. He looked a little bit jaded, a little bit tired there and that probably um, ended up in uh, mm. why in a big part of why Everton got defeated last yeah. weekend. Newcastle, okay, they, they played okay-ish against mm -hmm. Wolves. Could have got a little bit more out than that 1-1 uh, one -one draw, but this one, tough one to call, but I'm gonna go for a, a sneaky away win to the Toffees, back to winning ways at the top of the table, and I'm gonna go for a 2-1 away victory. Yeah, I, yeah, I think the uh, Toffees are gonna be back to winning win ways well. Winning ways as well. I've gone exactly the same as you. Two yeah. one. Uh, Rodriguez should feel a lot better this week, especially um, with the way he played and everything. Calvert, Calvert Lewin will be back on his uh, shooting boots, I reckon. And the interesting thing as well, the Dean red card from last week has been downgraded to a one match ban. Has it? It has now. Yeah, yeah it, it looked a bit harsh. Be a It was originally going to be three he matches. Was so. nibbling at his ankle, so wasn't yeah. he running through? But to, and it looked a little bit harsh because it looked like he. He sort of trod on, on on him, but not on purpose. No, it, it's definitely not a straight red in my eyes. No, no chance at all. But yeah, I'm going to go for a uh, two one in this one. Next up, we got one of the uh, top matches of the weekend. Uh, half past four on Sky on Sunday between Man United and Arsenal, both in European action this week. Man United, I believe, on Wednesday, and Arsenal on Thursday in the Europa League. Um, <laughs> Man United, 0-0 last week against Chelsea. You could say very lucky to come out of that um, as a draw. Could have very well lost it, but then they could have won it if they would have taken their chances. And they're coming up against an Arsenal side who lost last week to Leicester. Just didn't think they were strong enough. Um, starting to drop off form a little bit now, Arsenal. Losing games here and there. And I think that trend's going to continue. Um, they are playing on Thursday night as well, so they will be a bit tired, especially if they don't make ample changes. And I think Man United will start to gather a little bit of form, but not enough to push up the table. So I'm going to go for a narrow 2 1 Man United victory. Mm, you're actually tipping Manchester United. For once, win. yeah. Wow, yeah, it's a difficult one to predict. They're both in European action this midweek. Mm -hmm. Manchester United, it looks like their defensive frailties, looks like they're shoring up at the back a little bit, looking a lot stronger than they have been. Arsenal. Difficult to predict with Arsenal at the moment. Abamian's way out yeah. of form at the moment. Lacazette's not not getting on the score sheet like he was earlier in the season. However, because of Manchester United's 
ineptitude, you could mm -hmm. call it, at the moment. I'm going to call this one a draw. I think both teams will score. Uh, but I'm going to go for a 1-1 score draw because Arsenal are always up for, up for this fixture mm. yeah, historically. Next up we've got Spurs at home against Brighton. This again is on Skybox office. Yeah. It takes place at 7.15 on Sunday mm. evening. Brighton, okay, they've been playing well this weekend but they find themselves in 16th position. Only 5 points recorded on the board, scoring 10 goals and 12 goals against Spurs. Flying, okay, they didn't really put... Um, uh, Burnley to the sword last week. No. It was it was that uh, goal from Son. Yeah, Burnley did have a good game though. They yeah, probably the best that they played this season. Yeah, without um, sort of making any inroads into that uh, that Spurs uh, net, <laughs> you can say. So even though Spurs haven't won at home this season, I think this is the game where yeah. they're going to you know pull out pull it out of the bag and uh, gain all three points. So I'm going to go for a. A 3 nil victory, and of course Lewis Dunk is out Lewis Dunk, yeah. in this one. So. Which is going to really hinder them because here's an interesting stat as well. Brighton, along with Man City and Liverpool, are the only teams who have scored in every single game this season, yeah. which is quite interesting. So that goes to show they're scoring loads. I mean, they've got probably this, yeah, they've got the second highest goal score goal scoring tally outside the top 10 at the moment in the bottom half of the table so it is really the defence that is causing problems and Lewis, losing Lewis Dunk at the back is really going to cost yeah. them well the likes of Trossard there he, yeah. he look, if he can get his um, shooting boots on okay, he's, he's out, peppering, peppering the goals with shots and Malpais there as well he, he's due another goal or two so yeah. you never know but the, yeah but the thing that concerns me with that is the defence and Tottenham they're just mm. going to run right around it especially when Lewis Dunk isn't there yes they may have Ben White but I just and I just he think can't do it all himself. He can't do it all himself, really. So, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Brighton finally gonna fail to score in a game, and I think Spurs are gonna win this one two 0 However, it could be more. Next up, we've got a battle of the promoted teams uh, between promoted teams between Fulham and West Brom. West Brom uh, getting another point last week, surprisingly against Brighton. Even though Brighton didn't have the best of games, thought they could have played much better. And Fulham lost against Palace, of course, two one. So, yeah, Fulham seemed abs seem absolutely doomed, especially with the amount of goals they're letting in and not scoring much. Even Mitrovic doesn't have his scoring boots on at all, unlike how he was the last time in the Premier League. Maybe Lookman will save their season. M maybe I don't think so. Somehow, no? but. I don't know, I, I feel that West Brom are going to get something in this one, especially yeah. with the way that they've been playing against certain sides around them, especially picking up good draws. They've got three points already, three draws, three losses. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think this is going to finally be time that West Brom will win a game, and I think it's going to be a narrow 1-0. Yeah, West Brom haven't actually beaten Fulham since the 2010 season. Mm -hmm. and the last four meetings have resulted in draws. Three of them have been 1-1. So um, it does look like that uh, this is going to end up in a draw. And I'm actually going to go for that. I'm going to go for another 1-1 one, one scoreline. West Brom, it is a six-pointer. So are they going to keep it tight or are they going to go for it? Fulham average of 3.33 shots mm -hmm. so far this season. Uh, on target, I should say. And West Brom, just four shots yeah. again on target. So it's going to be a tight match. <laughs> It's a six-pointer, really. They should be really going yeah. for this. If they can get three points on the board, then that will put them um, in a positive uh, frame of mind for the for these coming weeks. But uh, I think they're going to cancel each other yeah, out yeah. these uh, two promote sites. And one, one which will uh, possibly see Fulham move off the bottom of the table. Probably not. <laughs> Finally, on Sky, on Monday, it's the last fixture of the weekend, and that's Leeds at home against Leicester. Now, what Leeds had a, an absolute fantastic uh, result last uh, week, uh, beating Villa, who uh, mm -hmm. were looking really good themselves. And Leicester, they seem to have turned their fortunes around slightly. Uh, they are up into fourth position after a little bit of uh, stuttering because they did have suffered two defeats in the last yep. three matches. However, that victory against Arsenal is going to really bolster them mm. I think although Leicester are in European action on Thursday evening and coupled together with some injuries this could be a, mm, a tough fixture for Leicester although they Definitely. do have a, an extra games rest from those other uh, teams who are playing in the Europa League such as Arsenal so 
tough one to call. I think there will be goals, mm. even though Leeds' defence looks uh, a lot better than it did at the start of the season. But uh, with Jamie Vardy getting back on the score sheet, I think sheet, I think there will be goals in this one. So I'm yeah. going to go for an away win to Leicester. I'm going to go Leeds 2, Leicester 3. Interested. I'm actually going to go for another Leeds win. How on earth, is, pa- that, how right? on earth is Patrick Bamford scoring Hat-trick. in this league? Hat trick. He can't. Uh, how? He, he he can't score in the championship. He struggles to score like anything. Misses sitters. Just struggles. Just terrible. But in the prem, he's scoring everything. What's going on, guys? Put it in the comments if you know. Anyway, but um, magic dust. But yeah, magic dust leads. I, th- I think they're going to win again. I think they're going to start to climb up the table to the horror of Irish guy, of course. You know the story, guys. And I'm going to say a 2-1 Leicester. I think they're just going to be too tired, especially after their Europa League action. Fantastic. So that concludes our predictions mm-hmm. for Week 7 of this. The 2020-2021 Premier League season. As usual, I'm going to leave a template of the fixtures in the description. If you'd like mm-hmm. to play at home and join mm-hmm. us in the league, there's, what, there's something like 150 people now playing in it, something like that. 158. If you want to join the rest of Mm -hmm. us, then be sure to leave your predictions as a comment. And top scorer will get a shout out Mm -hmm. in the next video. And as usual, I'm going to be selecting somebody at random on Friday evening to represent you guys as well. Now, quickly, Nathan, before we go, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, Yeah, live stream as usual. um, Wednesday night, even though this probably won't be out. Probably not. No, probably not. Probably be out about one o'clock Thursday morning something like that yeah true and then Cardiff versus QPR on the Saturday yeah. another away fixture for the Bluebirds had so many make sure you're there guys fantastic as usual thanks for watching thank you to all the new subscribers as well make sure uh, you contribute with your predictions but mm. for now we're both going to bid you farewell and we'll see you in the next video Cheers, guys.